Right. Let's do it. Wow. Hey guys, uh, well we're here today to do a little bit of a test with the Mini 2. I've had heaps of comments on my channel about uh, altitude issues and where the altitude is read from, even to the point where some people have registered a negative altitude um, on their DJI Fly app. So I'm here, um, so I've chosen a spot, I'm halfway down a hill, but also there's lots of space beneath me. I'm gonna fly the drone out to a little coastal inlet I'm going to take off from here. So as I said, I'm halfway down a hill, but then there's space beneath me as well. So it'll be interesting to see what reading I get from my takeoff point and then what that does to the altitude as we fly and maybe drop down. Anyway, let's, let's just set it up. Have a go. Oh, okay. It'll be pretty bright. I'm going to need some form of ND filter on. I'll chuck on a 16, I reckon. Now I've done a video about ND filters for the Mini 2, so be sure to check that out. Link up here and in the description below. The whole point has been Alrighty, we are good to go. Gee, it's real windy here today. Now, I'm reading pretty much zero um, on the height. So let's just take it out there until we get it over quite a deep part of the valley. Now I'm gonna drop it down. And yep, sure enough, it's showing a negative, a negative altitude. So it bases it the altitude is based on where you take off from, not what you think the sea level or the ground level is. So the implications of that is if, for example, I reckon I'm maybe 40 to 50 meters below normal ground level, if I have placed my return to home height, return to home altitude at 100 odd meters, so it's at close to 100, there we go, 100 meters. So it's actually 100 meters higher from where I am. So it's only 60 meters at that ground level. The implications of that could be quite serious when you're planning your return to home altitude based on the obstacles you've got around you, depending on where it is when you take off. So if I bring it back now, really fighting that wind today and I'll bring it down to here which is pretty much ground level or ground zero from with regards to uh, the takeoff point but it's actually probably 40 meters below the ground level up there the normal road level geez I don't know I'd be too keen on a hand landing today Christ what am I going to do now? Well, one of the things I wanted to do today was a range test, but it is way too windy for that today. I would battle to get it back, I reckon. So one of the things we can see is just how well this drone performs in the wind. Like I've got my road video mic on and I don't even know if you guys can hear me in this wind but it's really strong. Bring the drone in a little bit. You can see how it's really battling. But actually the footage overall not too bad at all. 
pretty incredible little beast. You can see how it's been buffeted around, but actually that footage is pretty damn good. You can see how that drone has been pushed around in the wind, really gusty, but look at that footage, you wouldn't actually know. Go on, get out there, get out there. Super smooth and it will be really gusty out there down in that valley. So what I'm going to do now is bring it back. As it is really going to, you'll see how it's really going to battle that wind. There we go. It's still doing 8 meters a second into the wind, it's not bad. Really getting pushed to the side, I'm having to correct it, bring it back. Right, landing could be a bit of fun in this wind. It, the thing bit me the other day. Video on the channel. Right, let's do it. Wow. Bells, bells. Jeez, it all went off there. The camera got knocked over by the wind. Drone just about cut my arm off. Well, not quite. It actually wasn't too bad, but it was a bit sketchy uh, in this wind. Uh, I was going to do a range test today, but it's way too windy for that, especially with the wind behind me. Um, you know, if you are flying in the wind, you really need to fly into the wind to start with, and that way, when you need to bring it back, at least you've got a tailwind. But the opposite applies today and it'd just be no good because I'd be firing it right out there at a go for miles and then I'd struggle to get it back and I might well run out of battery uh, to be able to get it back to me. So uh, not today, Roger Finch. Anyway, that's the lowdown on the altitude. Basically is the altitude that uh, the drone is set at. Uh, the zero altitude is from where you take off. So if you're halfway down a hill or in a valley, that is ground zero as far as it's concerned. If then you're flying up to the normal ground level, then it's not going to register the, as zero. It's going to register it as 40, 50, 100, however high above it you are. So you really got to take that into account when you are looking at what's around you and setting your return to home altitude because it's really going to muck you up. The other implication of that is often when you fly low over water, you are not taking off from that level unless you're sort of down at a lake level or something like that. You're often sitting above the, say the beach level and then you're taking off and then you're going down. So your drone is gonna give you a negative, um, a negative altitude reading. The issue with that is, is when you are, if you are taking off from ground level and the water is the, is the same level, you know zero, you know, don't go, go below zero or maybe just stay one meter, two meters, three meters above it or something like that. But if you're taking up above the water and then going down to the water, you're gonna lose all judgment as to how far above the water you are. And uh, with the lenses on these things, they make things look closer than they are and it's very hard to judge. So you are well at risk of putting your drone in the drink. So uh, you just gotta take that into account when you're flying your drone up or down from, uh, from where you take off. Anyway guys, a bit of a different video for us today, hope you got something out of it and uh, we'll see you in the next one, cheers.